But Merle Evers, the widow of Megra Evers, believed and she prayed, and some amazing things happened. A couple of months later, Jackson police are cleaning out a closet, having to find a box that contained crime scene photographs of the killing of Meg Revers, including the fingerprint of Byron D. Levesque was lifted from the murder weapon. A couple of months after that, Merle Evers shared with me her copy of the court transcript that she had saved in the safety deposit box. And a couple of months after that, the prosecutor in the case found the murder weapon in his father-in-law's closet. Sounds like I'm making it up, but <laughs> it, it really happened. Um, they did make a movie about this, and some of you may have seen it. It's called Ghosts of Mississippi. Uh, did, I'm portrayed in the movie, which is kind of an unusual experience, I have to tell you. But the two questions I usually get about the movie uh, are, uh, were you portrayed accurately, and did you get a lot of money? <laughs> And the two quick answers are no and no. <laughs> now, I, there's nothing my character said in the film that I actually said in real life, and, and not even get any money. So sorry, kids, about those college loans. So anyway, uh, uh, but anyway, my wife and I were fortunate enough to get invited to the premiere of the film, which was nice. I'd never been to New York City, so kids, please go to New York City. It's, it's a nice place to visit although preferably on somebody else's tab, which is what I did. So I um, so went to New York City, and, you know, we're all, you know, we're at the premiere, and all these celebrities are around, and, you know, Rob Reiner is there, directed the film, Whoopi Goldberg is there, uh, Alec Baldwin is there, you know, before he hit the guy, and, uh, and uh, he's really a nice guy, actually. I actually had lunch with him. It was, it was very nice. Anyway, um, but anyway, all these celebrities around, so my wife's like, all these celebrities around, we can't talk. So if there's anything in accurate movie, just press my palm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so the movie starts, house lights go off, you know, the screen's dark, says, this story is true. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Byron D. Beckwith is portrayed in the movie by James Woods. James Woods plays him, and he got an Oscar nomination for that. And uh, but some people ask me, he does a great job, by the way. Uh, some people ask me, is Beckwith really that racist? And I'm like, he's worse. <laughs> he was far more racist than they, than they portrayed him in the film. I got, I got news for you. But I did go to interview him. Of course, to go to interview Byron D. Beckwith, you have to pass the quiz. And the quiz went like this. Are you white? Where did you grow up? Where are your parents' names? Where do you go to church? Where do you live? And you know, I could have refused to answer those questions, but when it comes to conservative, waspish, Christian upbringing, I've got it. <laughs> and I knew he'd love my answers, so I just answered honestly. So, um, so he invited me up. I, I went up. He lived in Signal Mountain, Tennessee, which is just outside of Chattanooga. And uh, so we spent, I guess, about five or six hours talking. It was starting to get dark. And Signal Mountain is a beautiful place when it's getting dark, but not if you happen to be standing next to Byron D. Lebeck with <laughs> See, he insisted on, like, walking me out to my car. And I'm like, really? That's okay. I, I think I can find my way. So he walks me out to my car anyway. He gets me out there and says, if you write positive things about white Caucasian Christians, God will bless you. If you write negative things about white Caucasian Christians, God will punish you. If God does not punish you directly, several individuals will do it for him. <laughs> so his wife had made me a sandwich. <laughs> I think you can guess what I did with the sandwich. 